Hello everyone, my name is Robert and welcome to part 3 of my series where I'm building a blog using various Microsoft technologies like LightSwitch and open source technologies like JavaScript and so on. Um, at the end of the last episode, I ran up against the problem so, and I spent some time over the weekend having a look at what that problem was and seeing if there's a way to fix it. So let's actually see what happens here. Uh, here's the browser popping up. When you run the app, everything's still running as is. And if we go to the URL, it fails with an error. We actually weren't seeing this. What we were seeing was this. If we go into IE, because we were doing everything in IE, it would just completely crash and die. But in Chrome, we got a whole different error message. And actually, for whatever reason, this error message makes a lot more sense um, than the sort of thread-based issue that we are seeing with IE. With Chrome, it's very easy to see that, you know, that we're having a serialization problem here. It's saying there's this thing, and it can't serialize it. It's very easy to see what's going on there. It even tells us what it is. It's the details class. And from that, it becomes kind of quick and simple to figure out how to fix this and what the cause of the problem is. So let's go back to that. And let's go have a look there. Um, so first things. Let's jump into here, and uh, uh, there were some things I picked up over the weekend while I was investigating this. First thing, obviously, uh, that the LightSwitch server builds on top of ASP.NET, uh, and by ASP.NET I mean the, the broader concept of ASP.NET, not just web forms, but everything. So you can do this to it, you can go to NuGet and update it, which is really cool. It can go off and download and install all the bits for you. And that will just update not just only the ASP.NET components, but LightSwitch then gets updated, and we have newer versions and so on. So that's really quite cool. And from what I can see, nothing breaks with that. So we kind of get a, an update that way. Um, something else I found, so when we were looking at this, when we were building this piece of code, we were trying to recreate the concept I had in the view there of the blog posts, and I found out that for whatever reason, I don't actually need to do that. I don't know why I didn't see this the other day, but if we go in here, duh, 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 there's our query that we built in LightSwitch. So I can actually just say dot execute, I think. Hello, uh, blog posts dot execute. I'm sure the ID will catch up with me eventually. Um, see? Oh, it's a method, so call that method then. And then call execute, which is quite cool. And so then I don't need any of this logic here, which is useful. Because now I've got all the logic put there separate, which makes a lot of sense to me. Because now I can control that in a single place, and I don't have to control it in multiple locations. So, but we'd still have the problem here, because we're turning this, this class here. And if we go into this class, if I hit F12, F12, uh, it's going to ask me which one I want to use. Um, I think we can actually use that no, we won't use that one. Uh, this one here, and you can see it's got all this stuff in here, it's not all serializable, and it actually doesn't make sense to send this through. There is a lot of metadata in here that's light switch specific. And so, while it's annoying that you have to, um, it actually makes sense that we probably want to send the clients who consume our API, not the light switch data, but a simplified version, a version that makes sense to their sort of requirements. So we can do that with a bit of link. Uh, we'll say return posts dot select, and we'll just do it this way. So we'll say new anonymous class, and um, for some people they, I, I like to do underscore because it's just a nice shorthand because then I can just do stuff like that. Um, but for other, you know, I have heard people say that the underscore looks really ugly and makes it hard to read, and. I, can, I could get behind that view of the world. Um, it is nice, though, to have that in there. That, that you can have a simple variable with just underscore. Um, so we'll, we'll go and just put all of these in here. Um, and now what I actually want to do is I'm going to do Alt-Shift, select all of that, and go up here, Alt-Shift, Control-Paste. Yeah. Actually, I don't want the dot there. I want that bit there. Yeah. Copy, alt shift paste, and then I can just change this to author equals, and body equals, and id equals, 
just equals title equals. Cool. And so we have this anonymous type, and everything's great. Uh, but so this won't work because I'm returning an anonymous type here instead of blog post. So I actually need a proper class. If I was using a tool like uh, CodeRash or ReSharper, they have built-in features for this. Yeah, I've used CodeRash for many years, and really was nice being able to just like click on something and say name anonymous type, which is the name of their factory does this, and takes this anonymous class we've built here, and goes and builds a fantastic concrete implementation. Um, but I don't have uh, code rush installed, so, but we can do this manually. So we'll just change this to put the name in there, and we'll just use the built-in Visual Studio things. So we'll hit Control dot, and we'll generate a new type. Um, by default, that'll give us a class and everything. And then all I have to do is go here, Control dot, Control dot, ooh, back, and do Control dot, enter, down, Control dot, enter, down, Control dot, enter, down, Control dot, enter down and go back here to this new class. We'll make sure this is public. I'll be pedantic and clean up my usings. And so now we've got the simplified class of everything that the clients will get. We're returning blog post and we'll just change that to that and that'll be all happy. So that's pretty cool. So now we can hit run again. Uh, oh, it comes back up in, in IE in Chrome again, which is fine. Uh, let's go run this in, uh, yeah, well there it is in Chrome, because um, Chrome relaunched both my tabs, so you'll see here it's got the, the data coming through, and we've got this nice sort of clean thing, I'm not passing comments that I don't need, I'm not passing navigation info and row hit versions and things like that, it becomes really clean. Uh, let's just take this over to IE, and IE is now prompting at the bottom here with, do I want to save this or not, so we can hit open, hopefully, no. All right, save and open. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Retry. Whatever, i.e. There we go. And you can see, there is it in JSON. My Chrome, I think, is showing it to us in XML. And for whatever reason, i.e. is pulling it down and saving it as JSON. So we can actually get both options there, which is quite cool. So there we go. We've kind of solved that problem now. Uh, so let's close all of that down. And then what we're going to do... Um, here is what I want to do next. Uh, let's get back to building our page. Um, and so, where is our web page? Uh, there's our web page. There's the index, uh, which is crashing because I have some rogue extension running around. Uh, so we've got that in there. And so here we are calling AP application data blog post set. And now I can actually change this to API blog posts, so the thing we've built with Web API, and we can hit F5, and so once again back into Chrome, because that was what I was using last, and we'll say web blog index.html, I think was the page, there we go, welcome to our blog, and it's not loading anything, hmm, All right, let's stop that, uh, let's fix this up so it will launch in IE, um, so we can get all the debugging features properly running, if we can do that somehow. Open with. All right, well, let's see what happens. Instead of wasting time doing that, let's hit a breakpoint on this and just see what happens when we run this. We'll manually run this in IE. It should actually still be there. Um, so there's no debugger attached, which is not going to help us. What if the debugger gets attached properly in Chrome? No, it doesn't. Um, but that's OK, because in Chrome, we can hit F12, and I can do sources. And I can have put a breakpoint on there, reload this, and we'll just debug in here, which is also just good. Uh, cool, and so I want a break when it gets there. I'll just hit run. Okay, so at some point, it's okay, back to that. 
I think we might have a network problem. Yep, there we go. 404 page not found. Uh, blog post on API. Um, kind of weird. So let's just check that. Did I? Oh, API blog, not blog posts. Uh, okay, so that's why we're having that problem. Right, so we'll just fix up the URL and we'll run this again. And uh, somewhere in here should be a window that's still open. Cool. And we'll just F5 on that. Hey, look at that. Nothing happened. But I didn't see any problems with our network stack. Control F5. That ran. We just didn't get any content in here. Let's put a breakpoint back on that. And we'll refresh and hit that breakpoint. And so we are getting the value back now. And oop, something went wrong there. Oh, it just it broke out of that. Oh, wait, there's no value anymore. Because we're no longer doing um, the stuff we were doing. Uh, was <laughs> uh, just the built in features. If at this point I just type, uh, what is it, blog posts? Um, so you can blog post. See, I don't have a value anymore. We used to have a value. Um, now I just have blog posts in here, and we can expand it out. It's got one. It's an array because we're a square braces there, but we only have one object in there. So that property, because we've changed the, the technology uh, that's behind this from uh, OData, WCF data services, effectively to Web API. So let's run this again. And we'll come back here and we'll refresh this. And oh, there we go, publish test. There's, there's the title of our first blog post, which is really cool. And what's great now is we have these sort of richer clause. We have this simpler clause and we have this more structured system. So from here, it becomes very easy for us to go and start to structure this. At this point, I have no idea what I want to do with structuring it. Um, but I actually do think this is a nice we have a short episode today while I go back and think about structuring this and putting it all together and seeing how all of this fits together and how we're going to modify this for the next one because what we've done up to this point is just really to you know do something dirty and nasty to see to get the content there um, what I want to do is now take it to the next point where I say all right you know, we want to send back the data to the page, but I don't want to be involved in the code of the page. I want to I want to separate the, the logic and the the, uh, the presentation apart, very much like MVC would. So this would be controller logic, and then I want a view logic. So I need to figure that out and probably f learn a new JavaScript library in the same time. So that's a good place to end there. Uh, if you do have ideas, if you have, if you see I'm doing things wrong, if you um, have questions on what I'm doing, please feel free to drop it in the comments below and I'll I'll respond to those as quickly as possible. And I'd love to hear any ideas for things you'd like me to try and implement or suggestions of things you'd like me to try and do with this. I have a couple ideas, but really this is for you, uh, the viewer, to get as much value out of it. And so if you have things you want, let me know and I'll gladly work them in. So with that, I want to say thank you for join me on this short episode today and I will see you sometime later in the week hopefully. Goodbye.